Through the individual actions recommended for mitigating climate change, the multiple school science and geography textbooks from some of the highest emitting countries. These are familiar to everyone who's had an education in these countries, but there is a major problem here. Okay, so since the late 1980s and 1990s when I was at school, this is actually my textbook, okay, from the 80s and 90s. I was going to bring a modern textbook, but the advice that's in here is exactly the same as it was 30 years ago. Um, the vast majority of uh, textbooks mention recycling. Behind me, you can see the tons of CO2 equivalent avoided per year for one person undertaking this action. Okay? Recycling was mentioned the most. Plant-based diet wasn't mentioned at all, not in one textbook. Buying green energy wasn't mentioned in any textbook. Avoiding one long-haul flight or avoiding flying was only mentioned in a couple of textbooks, two out of ten. And don't own a car was barely mentioned at all. But one thing that is missing from this list that has a greater impact than all of these put together, and this is a big problem because at the moment our education of students in schools is totally ineffective. Telling them to recycle when it only saves 0.21 tonnes of CO2 equivalent, okay, and bear in mind, um, we all live in, uh, or we're from Berlin, um, bear in mind it's around 8 to 10 tonnes per person. Changing your light bulbs or recycling is going to do diddly squat. It's going to make no major significant difference. My students went away. They went out. They did their research. They looked up this paper, uh, Vines and Nicholas, from the Environmental Research Letters from last year, 2017. This is what they found out. The biggest single action one individual can take, and we're not telling students it. 58.6 tonnes. That's greater than all of the other actions that were mentioned in every textbook that we looked at. We looked at 26 different actions in textbooks. The vast majority of the ones that were mentioned are ineffective. And how many times is this mentioned? None. Not a single textbook that I could find from the last 30 years. Not a single one. Now bear in mind that this is looking particularly at high um, emission countries. Okay? High emission countries. This is looking at the richest countries. It's a huge, huge thing, and none of my students know this. I went round earlier, I showed people a piece of paper with this on, without the 58.6 tons on, without the information on there, and I said, what is this big question mark? What's missing here? And I couldn't find a single person here that could answer that question correctly. It's also a very, a very cultural thing, isn't it? You know, having, having children and having a certain number of children is, is a norm that's passed down through society um, and is quite a hard one, having one child myself and hearing all the questions about why I'm not having more, I realise how strong that norm is. Yeah, I mean, the interesting thing about this, we were looking, okay, where could we act on this where it's a win-win situation? And one of the interesting things is, I don't know if you're aware of this, in the United States, for example, the unintended pregnancy rate is 45%. That adds around a million unintended births, uh, not necessarily unwanted, but unintended uh, pregnancies in one year. That's an extra million uh, US footprints per year added. And this is something that people don't necessarily want. Um, I think this is a case of poor sex education. I think it's a case of um, the not reliable enough contraceptives, um, and this is very much in rich countries that aren't getting this right. So to reiterate, not once was choosing to have one for a child mentioned in one of these textbooks. Not once. Governments, you are fucking up our education. But as radical as it might sound, we're simply adding too many people to this planet through unintended pregnancies, and for people being unaware of how their choices impact this planet. If you're convinced that you can deal with climate change while we're adding the equivalent of the entire population of London every single month, then, as Sir David Edmore has said, you're either a madman or an economist. I know some say they're worried about their population's aging, but being brutally honest, not only does climate change outweigh the risks of an aging population, but if it becomes as bad as expected, there won't be an aging population at all. If we tackle the problems of unintended pregnancy and family planning access, 
would not only make all climate solutions easier, we would also see multiple positive benefits for many of the UN Sustainable Development Goals, which all of you adopted. With less unintended pregnancies, inequality and conflict over resources, such as food and clean water, would fade, simultaneously diminishing civil unrest. The government's expenses for education will decrease, educational opportunity will rise, and unemployment and crime rates will recede. This action of making sure every pregnancy is intended and the education of proper solutions will help us reach the goal of this conference, climate change action. People are empowered to stand up for their rights, their lives and their, their ideologies. May I remind you that the role of every government is to protect their citizens and there will be consequences once people don't feel protected anymore. The insecurity will either weaken the authoritative position of a government due to the fate of trust or a populist power will take advantage of the civil unrest and repeat the mistakes of the 1930s. Do not underestimate the wrath of a feared humanity. Anger feeds on fear and we are afraid. I didn't, I didn't expect it to be this powerful. Could we perhaps um, 